open your cerebral cortex and shift your lobes into upper beta phase because you are going to have Bitcoin knowledge transmitted directly into your vestibulocochlear. Your host at Bitcoin Knowledge is Trace Mayer, an early Bitcoin advocate since it cost a quarter, but this is not intended to be investment advice. A doctor of jurisprudence, but this is definitely not legal advice. And an investor in core cryptocurrency infrastructure, including Armory, BigPay, Kraken, and Nitagio, but this is not a recommendation of those services. Here, you get fed via direct mind download with pure and free Bitcoin knowledge. Welcome back to the Bitcoin Knowledge Podcast. We have for this episode, 2018, a year in review for Bitcoin and also a decade. Uh, I guess the exciting part, $14,000 on January 1st, 2018 to $3,700. So doesn't look too good on the surface, but that puts us around M49. Uh, with M1, we've gone from 19 to 49. That puts us between Hungary and Argentina. Sure, it's... Uh, about a third of a percent per day, daily decline in the price. But when you look back over our decade, excluding the first couple of years, it's about half a percentage point per day uh, increase in the Bitcoin price. And that's a lot. Uh, about $410 billion of Bitcoin transacted on the network when you look at uh, some of the change addresses or whatnot. Of course, that's an estimate. We have no idea how much has been going on with things like Open Dime or whatnot. Uh, the BitMEX insurance fund is up to about 21,000 Bitcoins. That's about 0.12% uh, of all Bitcoins that exist. So all you crazy guys uh, getting wrecked on BitMEX, like, don't do that. Um, LedgerX has been trading fully collateralized Bitcoin options uh, for the whole year. Uh, these are puts and calls, fully collateralized, very exciting. They're regulated as a swap execution facility and a derivatives clearing organization by the CFTC. And, of course, BACT, is, who raised $182.5 million, uh, they want to get the same type of uh, regulatory structure. Uh, this could allow huge, huge amounts of capital to come into the Bitcoin space. That's very exciting. Uh, the fiber network, has to, tra to move blocks around its... Uh, about 90% would be it propagated in 570 milliseconds. Uh, that's down to 141 milliseconds. I mean, this is incredibly uh, good for mining and just the health and strength of the network. And, of course, who can leave out the Blockstream satellites? They've now got the fifth uh, operating satellite covering Asia-Pacific region. So that's the entire world. You get a $100 satellite dish, you can download the blockchain, the entire thing. Uh, this is wild. Uh, censorship resistant to like you know war levels this is really cool and consequently we don't know exactly how many full nodes are going to be running using these satellites things like that I mean this is custom internet infrastructure that you can use in a purely additive way in addition to the regular uh, internet infrastructure that we have and in January or at least when back starts operating uh, Blockstream is going to be carrying the Bitcoin price feed uh, along with these satellites. And that's a very important thing when it comes to stuff like oracles for smart contracts or whatnot. You know, some interesting stats. The blockchain has grown from 150 gigabytes to 198 gigabytes. And Jameson Lopp, who I got a bunch of these stats from, uh, he wrote a great blog post rehabbing a lot of this, and it'll be in the show notes. Uh, but... It's taken him, it's gone from 162 minutes to sync to 144 minutes to sync. So even though there's a big increase in the actual size of the blockchain, he's syncing it faster. So that's great. Number of Bitcoin ATMs has gone from 2,000 to 4,000 that we know about. And the number of SegWit transactions have gone from 10% to 40%. Number of UTXOs have gone from 62 million to 50 million. I think a lot of this has been consolidation and batching by Zappo and Coinbase and some of these other players. And uh, back when 
you know, the block size debate was happening and transaction fees got really high, I kind of pointed out to Coinbase that they had economically destroyed millions and millions of dollars because the UTXOs were now more expensive to move than they were worth. And what do you know? Like, uh, SegWit gets activated, they start consolidating a bunch of these transactions. Uh, great stuff. The minor fees, they'd actually gotten up to $22.7 million per day at the height. Uh, they're about $110,000 per day right now. So uh, miners have really uh, been wrecked in 2018. The block reward, because it's in Bitcoins and then the exchange rate going down, plus the transaction fees going down, uh, by, minor revenue is just really taking, a, taking it on the chin. Lightning Network, uh, how awesome is that? Gone from zero to 19,000 nodes. Uh, zero Bitcoins to 500 Bitcoins uh, in, the, in the network. That's great. We also got Rootstock and Liquid. Uh, plus, Op Return has gone from about 50, transa- 50 per day to 300 per day. And this is used for things like Omni and just anchoring proof into the blockchain, which is really cool because, you know, the highest and best use of Bitcoin might not necessarily be money. I mean, if you're anchoring real estate title into the blockchain, for example, because you want that to be the source of truth, uh, you know, you might you might be willing to pay a lot more for that than someone might pay for a transaction to pay for coffee. So price elasticity of demand for transaction fees, uh, we want a lot of these other use cases. One of the problems, though, is, you know, they become unspendable outputs and stuff like that. So that's not, that's kind of a a waste, and it leaves some tech debt or some uh, stuff for full notes to deal with, but is what it is. The growth of this type of usage, just to put it in perspective, in 2014, there were 13,000 of these transactions in the whole year. 2015, 650,000. 2016, 1.04 million. 2017, 2.25 million. And 2018, 6.75 million. So people are really starting to use this for other stuff. Our Bitcoin on Reddit, it's up 380,000 subscribers, about 61%, just over a million now. Uh, Google Scholar, in 2009, there were 83 papers. Uh, 2016, there were 5,070 papers. 2017, 10,600 papers. In 2018, we're up to 14,400 papers. And there will be more because of uh, lag with reporting and stuff. What I'm really excited about are the GitHub commits and the number of contributors. So if you take out all the, um, like, merges and stuff like that, that where they're just copying code and look at the actual new work that gets committed. Uh, Bitcoin Core, 3,274 commits from 194 different contributors. A Lightning Network, 3,050 commits from 139 contributors. Uh, Gath, only 1,209 commits from 219 contributors. So at least it does look like there's some developers over there and it's not just a bunch of marketing hype. Uh, But like, where's the commits? You know, like, let's grow. Let's grow these things (laughs) if you're experimenting with so much stuff. And sure, some of it's probably happening in other projects. Uh, Monero, 2,084 commits with 111 unique contributors. Bitcoin Cash, uh, the ABC implementation, 786 commits from 41 developers. A dash 766 commits from 18 developers. Uh, yeah, it looks like dash is a graveyard or just nobody over there writing any code at all. Like, what a joke. Uh, Ripple, 340, 304 uh, commits, 25 developers. Stellar, 626 commits from 29 developers. And Litecoin, 54 commits from 7 developers. So it's clear that like that fifth network effect of developers, it's happening on Bitcoin and it's happening on Lightning Network, which is on top of Bitcoin. And everybody else is just like copying code or not writing any code at all. So, you know, <laughs> buy, your, buy those altcoins at your, at your own risk. Another huge metric is going to be venture capital investment and ICO investment. 
So, you know, let's just look over the years, 2012, $2.33 million of VC investment. And I was actually a significant portion of that. Uh, 2013, $120 million. Uh, 2014, 369 million, and then the first ICO with 30 million there. 2015, 601 million with 9 million in the ICOs. Uh, 2016 was 597 million with 245 million in the ICOs. Now, this is interesting because 2014 is that first year after the bear market. Uh, well, after the big run up in 2013, and then the bear market in 2014, and then you know, we didn't hit another all-time high till 2017, and yet the VC investment is almost double uh, each year. 2017, 876 million of VC investment, and of course we have it run up to about 20k. And then 2018, we have 3.128 billion of venture capital investment. So, you know, this is following very similar trajectory that it did in 2013, 2014: 120 million to 370 million. And 876 million to 300, uh, 3.128 billion, so about a triple increase. And so that's $1,300 to 20,000. Uh, you know, so we could be looking at like 20,000 to times 20 to like 40,000, uh, 400,000, 300,000, 400,000 dollar Bitcoin in the next uh, two three years. Because a bunch of this VC investments, you know, it's going to feed through. It's building companies. People are getting paychecks. People are working in the space. We're drawing a whole bunch of developers. We're drawing other talent like lawyers and accountants and uh, you know. And that, that's what a lot of this VC investment's uh, doing. It's, it's pulling human capital from other industries into Bitcoin and blockchain industries. And that's really cool. Uh, ICOs, 2016, 245 million. 2017, 5.5 billion. And 2018, 16.7 billion. So these ICOs, oh my gosh, they have just like raised tons of capital and wasted a lot of it because of the exchange rate uh, stuff. And, you know, looking at Rootstock, it, it would be very interesting if the next giant ICO bubble uh, happens w with Rootstock. Uh, kind of like, you know, everybody had to have Ethereum and, and, and stuff to, to kind of do the ICO bubble last time. Like maybe the next uh, major Bitcoin run. Uh, will be ICO bubble fueled with a bunch of altcoin chasers like uh, using rootstock stuff. Interesting, full nodes have actually decreased by about 33% and 19%, depending on the type. Uh, and Germans seem to be the ones that are running their own full nodes. Uh, so maybe it's Germans just have this notorious like OCD when it comes to being heavily overcapitalized with lots of cash <laughs> and they like to know that their stuff is their stuff. So it's really cool that they're running full nodes. Anyways, I'm incredibly excited just about everything that's happened in the Bitcoin space in 2018. Sure, the price is down, but the, the industry is just in forward motion like never before. And we have so much human capital that has really come into the space. And I think that there's a lot that's happening with institutional money getting trying to get positioned and stuff like that. Uh, we have Harvard and Yale endowments moving in. We have uh, Yale uh, professors talking about how you need to have 3 to 6% of total portfolio allocated to crypto because it's a non-correlated asset. We have huge amounts of debt. I mean, think about this. We have more. We have more U.S. debt. Uh, Twenty-one trillion dollars of U.S. debt. <laughs> that's more. That's more than a million dollars of debt per Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy to think about. The number of millionaires. Uh, they can't even have even close to a fraction of their own Bitcoin. Uh, ultra high net worth individuals. If they moved 1% of their net worth into Bitcoin, they would need 44 Bitcoins. Uh, and that would take out all the Bitcoins that are available. I mean, these things are incredibly scarce. It's the hardest money that the world's ever seen. And it's only going to keep getting harder and harder. Uh, remember May 2020, looking at the Bitcoin reward happening again. And just, there we go. You know, we're off and running. Now's the time to hodl. Mayor multiples gone from 3.7 down to about 0.6, and 
So, you know, statistically, now is a good time to be buying, throwing in the HODL gang stock. Anyways, what else has happened that's been really good this year? Oh, the Proof of Keys event. So with this decade of this first decade of Bitcoin closing, uh, we're going to have Proof of Keys, which I've started. It's a new cultural tradition on January 3rd every year going forward. We're going to withdraw all of our Bitcoin from any third parties just to see if we have them, just to see if we can. And it looks like we've already claimed our first uh, victim. Hit BTC has stopped, uh, has frozen a bunch of accounts and aren't, aren't allowing withdrawals. So, mm, you know, it's going to get crazy. So we can do this on, a, on an annual basis. We will have another decade going forward, which will be even brighter than this one. Remember, take possession of your own keys, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. And so there we go. That's 2018 in the books. Uh, January 3rd, 2009, the Bitcoin uh, software gets released by Satoshi. We're now 10 years into it. This is no longer a proof of concept. This is on the global stage. It's contending as the world reserve settlement currency. It's on like Donkey Kong. This is a real deal. What are we going to have? Are we going to have dollars? Are we going to have gold? Are we going to have something else like Bitcoin? And I went through the GitHub statistics. None of these other uh, projects out there are anywhere close when it comes to the number of developers, the quality of developers, the number of commits getting done, the amount of code getting done, the amount of research and development, the number of scholarly articles. This Bitcoin is where the intellectual combustion is happening. And a lot of these things, they take years to solve a lot of these problems and actually get them implemented. And so we've been proof of concepting and thinking about how to solve stuff the first 10 years. The next 10 years, we're actually going to be solving a bunch of it. And so it's going to be huge. Uh, and these Satoshis are going to get incredibly scarce, incredibly hard to come by. And the price is going to go up for each of them. That's just the way it's going to be. And so where are we going to be at in another 10 years? It'll be very interesting. But you come back and listen to this episode when we're there. Uh, I mean, it could, be, it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars per Bitcoin, uh, maybe even more. Who knows? I mean, it, it all depends on how fast this take, this uptake could happen. And with things like Backed and Ledger X, I mean, it, it'll be so obvious in 2028 when you're listening to the, the decade recap then. It'll, it'll be so obvious. It'll be like, how did people not see this? How did not people understand that this was going to be what was going to happen? It, I mean, it's... It kind of like where we're at now, you know, look, look back five years, like it's so obvious that Bitcoin would be where it's at today. And yet it was not obvious back then. And a lot of people didn't allocate capital and they, you know, everybody's doing economic calculation and a lot of people are staying in fiat currencies. A lot of people look at the yield curve, it's inverting. A lot of people are staying in debt. They're owning municipal bonds and other government debt and corporate bonds. They're staying in the stock market. They're staying in all this stuff and they're not doing their homework and they're not getting even one-tenth of one percent of their net worth into Bitcoin to have some type of option on it. And, you know, now that we have this proof of keys event and it's going to be happening every year, you know, I, I rolled it out December 9th of 2017, less than a month of preparation for the community. But now we're going to be talking about it throughout the year. We're going to be doing it every year. This is going to become part of our tradition and part of our culture. And taking the ultimate collateral, the new World Reserve Settlement Currency, taking that out of all of these institutions, out of all of these trusted third parties, I mean, we have so much rehypothecation going on. Nobody knows who owns what. Nobody, nobody even knows like what assets are out there. And yet, with Bitcoin, we can remove all of that performance risk, all of that counterparty risk. We can remove all all of it by taking possession of the keys ourselves. 
and that's now part of the tradition in Bitcoin. And it's going to be part of the tradition going forward. And we're transitioning from a fiat currency, fractional reserve, debt-based monetary system where everybody's taking whatever good collateral is out there and pledging it and repledging it and repledging it and repledging it and repledging it, re it, where if any single one of those counterparties fails, it's going to, you know, everybody's going to be in a mad scramble for the good collateral. And we're going to transition from that type of a system to an equity-based, 100% holding it in your hands with no types of encumbrances on it. They can't be seized or confiscated or frozen. And, you know, we're going to work out the legislative issues also. We're going to be introducing custody bills. We're going to be uh, introducing legal maneuvers that will uh, help clear up title on a lot of these Bitcoins and stuff like that. You know, a lot of this stuff is all going to be coming down the pipeline. And so 10 years from now, where is Bitcoin going to be? You know, and that's that's the multi, multi-trillion dollar question. And I think it's largely checkmate. Like, it, there's just so much momentum. There's just so much going on. And so you're either going to calculate correctly economically and, and have some of it, or you're not. And because of this proof of keys, the culture of the people who are going to have the capital a decade from now, they're going to they're going to just be a lot more aligned in terms of personal responsibility. And they're like they're no more bailouts. It's strictly limited in amount. You can't just print this stuff out of thin air like everything else. You can't play games with it. You have to deliver it on the blockchain. And so there's personal responsibility. And the people who are going to have the capital are going to be the ones who take personal responsibility and hold their own keys. And the people who don't, they're going to, they're going to see their pensions nationalized. They're going to see their bank accounts frozen. They're going to see their, their exchange accounts frozen. They're going to see all types of failures and bail-ins and bailouts and high and, and inflation of the monetary unit and all of this to take their purchasing power. And you're either going to adopt the soundest, hardest money the world's ever known, or you're not. And if you don't, and, and the other thing is Bitcoin is totally willful in the sense that you get to, you get to choose to use it or not. Like there's no, you're not being forced into it. You don't have to use it. Uh, to pay taxes or any of this type of stuff. It's totally voluntary. And because it's totally voluntary, it makes the economic calculation decisions a lot more real. You know, people don't have to begin maneuvering around different regulations or this or that or the other uh, when it comes to how or why they're using it, you know, to get tax breaks or this or whatever. Uh, none of that. None of that. It's totally willful. Uh, and personal responsibility, you're making your own cho choices, you're holding your own keys. Uh, this, is, this is a big deal. It's a big change in how the world has operated heretofore. We're changing time preference. People are going to stop spending their, their wealth on worthless trinkets and other, and other ding-dong things. And they're going to be hodling, you know, because it's going to make that much of a difference and that big of a difference. And people who don't, they're going to they're going to they're going to pay the price, the financial price. And so here we go. Anyways, it's going to be a very exciting decade coming uh, coming at us. Twenty twenty eight. We'll look back. Perhaps we'll even re-listen to this episode and see just how much of it we got right and just how much of it got wrong. Uh, anyways, love you guys and keep up the good work. Be sure to get a copy of the free Bitcoin Guide at freebitcoinguide.com. Got a question or suggestion? Record your voice at bitcoin.kn. 
Don't be shy. To help the show, share Bitcoin.kn with friends, post about it on Reddit, and otherwise spam the interwebs. Your iTunes comments and five-star reviews are very important to us. Please continue tuning in to the Bitcoin Knowledge Podcast, where we release interviews with the top people in the Bitcoin world. Now take some choline and let that Bitcoin knowledge consolidate. <laughs>